So this is an overview of the quasi-chemical model for the regular solution, or the atomistic model. And this is related to chapter 8.7.3 in the text by de Hoff. And I'm not going to go through the full derivation here, um, but just want to talk a little bit about the implications of this model. So we found that for the regular solution that delta H of mixing can be described by this one parameter model where the adjustable parameter here is alpha, but it turns out that this value of alpha actually has some physical meaning. So it comes from somewhere. It's not just sort of a fitting parameter. So to arrive at the meaning or the mathematical expression for alpha, we consider that we have this binary solution of A and B atoms. And we say that there could be AA bonds in this solution, AB bonds, or BB bonds. Each of these bonds has its own unique energy associated with it. And we are interested in finding also the number of each type of bond that is present. And so we come to the point where we have that the number of AA bonds is one half times Z, where Z is the coordination number, and naught is the total number of atoms in our system, and then XA squared, where XA is the composition or mole fraction of the A atoms. We have a similar expression for BB. And for AB, we arrive at the number of bonds like this. So the next step in this is to find delta U of mixing. And delta U of mixing is just U in the mixed state minus U of the components. And the U of the components is the mole fraction A times the molar internal energy of A and times the mole fraction of B plus the internal energy of B. And the internal energy is just basically the number of AA bonds, or the energy of an AA bond, because it's pure A rather, times the number of those atoms. So this is XA times one half and not Z. E A A. That is this term here, and this term looks very similar. And again, this full derivation can be found in the textbook. The U of the solution, this term here, this basically comes from the uh, taking the number of AA, BB, and AB bonds. And in the end, we get an expression right here for delta U mixing, which looks like this. N naught, the number of atoms, times the coordination number, times XA, XB, and then this term which contains the bond energies. Right? So we are going to define basically alpha to be equal to all of the stuff excluding these mole fractions. So we define this to be n naught z 
and then this energy term. This is a 2 down here, not a Z, that's a 2. For condensed phases, it is the case that delta U is approximately equal to delta H because the term that separates those, which is P delta V of mixing, is close to zero. So we can make this approximation. So now if we compare our delta H mix equation, we end up with basically the same expression here as we have here. So this is the expression for alpha. This is where alpha comes from physically, right? So we can take a look now sort of at the implications. This N and Z are not material specific. Z obviously depends on the crystal structure, so it is a little bit, but it, uh, it doesn't really tell us anything special about the behavior of this system, right? Since these are just multipliers. So all of the interesting stuff comes in based on the relative bond energy differences. So we are comparing EAB, the energy of an AB bond, to the average energy of AA and BB bonds. If the AB bond energy is greater than the average of the AA and BB bonds, right? then alpha is greater than zero, delta H mix is greater than zero, and what this tells us is that um, AA and BB bonds are preferred, right? This is less negative than these things. And so sort of at the atomic level, this is what this means. On the other hand, if EAB is more negative or less than the average of this, right, then alpha is less than zero, delta H mix is less than zero. Oops, sorry, I've messed this up up here. This should say AA and BB bonds are preferred. On the other hand, if we have this situation here, then AB bonds are preferred. So in the first case, it does not want to mix. And at low temperatures it won't, at high temperatures it might, but we will tend to see separation of the atoms into two different phases. In this particular case, mixing will occur because it's energetically favorable for these bonds to form. So that's sort of the origin of this alpha term in the heat of mixing equation.